Hi, everyone. Yep, it's my final performance for now in um, this last episode of Humbled for a while. And, um, well, I don't have a lot of time, so I just want to open it up right now. I have a special guest on the show today, David Hoffmeister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Beautiful to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Oh my God, thank you so much for being here. Because I had some, some things in my mind. Um, because we have this, um, this friend that, that's come to visit us in Mexico, and her name is um, Sharon. Sharon Leslie. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And she um, does readings, um, has said some things about the Akashic Records, and um, I'm just... I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this because I secretly go online and, and look at my readings sometimes and get readings um, since I've been in community. It's been my hidden secret. Only Emily knows about it. And it's surprisingly, um, it's all been like dead on. Every single reading I've ever just put, you know, pulled up for Virgo or the chat of the day or whatever, and it's all said, you, you're going to get married. You, you've had seven years of intensity and the next seven years are going to be very, very joyful. And it's time for you to really relax and um, just love yourself and be mm. in the joy of living. And, and they all said I would fall in love, but mostly with myself, that mm -hmm. I would have, I would know this universal love inside of me that was, um, yeah, it just feels, you know, it feels really deep because I, you know, we've all yearned for that. And I feel like I've been working on that for the last five Mm -hmm. months at La Casa, really, really deeply doing the work inside of me. And yet, any time I think I've gotten anywhere, um, I, I always am shown that I really don't know anything. So it's, it's almost like I don't want to, I can see a part of my mind doesn't even want to accept that this is my time to really be in joy mm -hmm. and accept the gifts of God's love and the fruits of my, my um my mind training. Mm -hmm. And um, I can also tell if I'm not to be looking at the internet in those readings, like nothing, none of it will make sense. Like all of it is right on or none of it is on. <laughs> so I know that spirit guides me as to when to look at those things and mm -hmm. when not to. I started last night in prayer um, about what I wanted to ask you. And as I talked to myself about it, I started to answer my own question. It basically was when and how do we allow the joy? And then as I was talking to you in my mind, it was like, you know, I've watched the ones who've gone before me just focus and, and focus, focus and function and mind training and, you know, just really work in it. And then I've noticed the ones who've gone before me many years have settled. They are sinking into the silence. They're not doing. They're in God's love. And I answered my own question because it was like, you put in the, the mind training and eventually your mind is relaxed and you can enjoy the fruits of your labor. Your labor. I just thought maybe you could speak to me a little bit about the, um, the readings and also about anything you could say in um, how to accept this joy and this love when, when you know it's time? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the readings, they are symbols that the Spirit can use to bring a sense of ease, of comfort, uh, to reinforce the message of relax. Uh, sometimes it's feeling too much overwhelmed when it seems like it's just everything is so wide open, it's all the unknown, because uh, the ego as it's being undone, it still it has a tremendous fear of the unknown, uh, which is really fear of, of the known. It's a, the it's a fear of redemption, it's the fear of love, but to the ego, it's like it, it sees the timeline, you know, as the known, and where is this all heading is the unknown. So I think that it can be used as guided in that way to, to bring a sense of, uh, oh, okay, here's, here's my direction, um, confirmations, hmm. you know, that you would fall in love, that you get married, that you would be having the next seven years would be very different. They used to talk about the seven year itch, but it's like, it's whatever that is, it's like it's a, it's a real confirmation of new beginnings. And I think 
to that sense of um, the joy really comes in when it, the name of your show is humbled and you feel like you keep getting more and more humbled and it just goes where everything seems more and more involuntary. So there's not this sense of trying to figure out or to, to try to find the path in form. And uh, it's kind of like the branching of the road section in the course where the hardest is the steps along the new way just because there's a temptation to go back. Always wanting to go back to a formula or what's tried and true or what have my brothers and sisters done or whatever. But I think you're just starting to feel like there's you're seeing symbols of rest, of relaxation, of merging in, of, uh, oh, okay, take it easy, it's all handled. And I think that's been the value of all the miracles that you've had is you're really seeing that it's all been handled beautifully and you can start to feel more of just self-acceptance of, okay, I'm right where I need to be and I don't need to try to figure something out or look for a problem anymore. It's like you're, the joy is not the problem. You know, the joy is uh, just when you give yourself the, the power and your mind to merge with that, then that's, that's what it was all for. It was mm -hmm. never about heartaches or struggles, you know, <laughs> at any point. That's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, if it, I was just telling David before um, the show started was that it just, it is the end of an era for me. Um, I had such a dramatic, intense life that this this first seven years in my when I decided to give my life over to the healing um, of my mind, like it was, I had some deep, deep patterns and childhood pains, and I just had to go through it. And I just, I, I was almost afraid to even, you know, David was supporting me to go out, to get married, to fall in love, to do my favorite thing in the world, travel, speak play music, um, and I just, there was, I could see the doubt thought in my mind, like, can I be happy? And, and then not only was I um, hearing it in the readings, but I was hearing it from Jesus, and then friends were contacting me on Facebook. I, Jesus told me that it's your time to be com completely happy, and I was just, so how do we embrace that with that, you know, I, I've been entitled, I've been arrogant, I've been selfish. Um, you know, in the beginning of this journey, I, I didn't want what was best for the whole. I didn't want to be scared anymore. I was in survival mode. And um, now the more that I give, the more happy I am. Like, and even if I feel um, angry or a heartache, if I, a heartache, if I just go towards that person, I feel so much love. So I know it's not about people anymore. It's just about what's guided. And, and, and I just want to... It seemingly I was getting everything I wanted and I just wanted to be sure that it was guided. And how sure can you get when I'm talking to this one, you know? But then my doubt thoughts would be reflected from some other people. Well, you know, David just says what you want to hear. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yes, I'm looking at you. <laughs> looking at my friend over here on the couch. <laughs> But it's okay because I realize that those are my doubt thoughts and I have to look at those doubt thoughts. And, and I, love, I love you for that, Jason. I do. I, there's even a softening with the ones who, who are there to make me really look at, question what's still there. That's a gift. I mean, that's such a gift. And of course, I have David, but he will always tell me if it's not guided. Like, he won't tell me what to do, but he'll go, yeah, well... <laughs> you'll, you'll say something and I'll know, so I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the prayer. We're, we're calling on the Spirit to, for recognition. Yeah. I read something on Facebook recently. It's like you don't find your soulmate, you recognize them. And mm. it's a, that's what enlightenment really is. It's just a recognition. It's not a change at all. And... It's amazing that it's that simple, and yet it's just relaxing and settling into that recognition more and more. Mm -hmm. And Jesus does say, again, you know, he says the one right use of judgment is how do you feel? So, you know, you can really fall back on that. You're going to open to the joy to try to really fully merge in the joy, to really allow yourself permission really to be consistently happy, and then that's also your barometer 
for uh, for guidance, you know. Yeah. Which is really good that that's like a version of the Bible. You shall know them by their fruits. Yeah. You know, you shall you shall know yourself by the joy that you feel and the consistency of that joy. Yeah. yeah. So simple, really. Yeah. I do keep hearing that you'll know them by your fruits, by their mm -hmm. fruits. Um, but there was just a part of, of me that wouldn't accept that, that it was time, even though I've been shown that, that it is. So, so that's good. Every time I have a thought, it falls. I'm just so grateful to be <laughs> sitting here with you, I think. Um, yeah, I, I remember now because I, I've just been, I've been so greatly and deeply supported in these past seven years, but it was intense and I had these strong beliefs and I, I wanted to be right about my pain, you know? And um, so as, as I just did what was guided and it was very uncomfortable to be with myself these, these last months and face what I needed to face, I think there's a point when we start to think like this is never going to end, but, but, um, but you wake up one day and it's just not, it's not there anymore. And then you think you're done and you know, a week later it, you have to face it again maybe, but you, it, you, you really don't remember the bad things. You only remember the love. So um, this, this next era, this time, you know, when I was trying to do what was uh, like with Micah coming into my life when I was trying to kind of pass on what I learned in a way that was that was helpful for me, maybe hard, but helpful. It didn't work. Like it wasn't working for me to kind of act out what I had been through. Um, so I had to learn that the past is truly gone. And just joining with Micah, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to to repeat the past. I was going to have to pray with her and ask for guidance. And I realized that I had gained a sense of integrity. Like there was, there was no way I could do what I had done in the past um, to try to get my way or, or, or help spirit out. It was like, I can truly feel every little nuance now. Like mm -hmm. I, that's, doesn't, that's not gonna work. And it's not, we don't do that. It's really, what would you have me do? I tried to come from a place of we don't do that mm -hmm. and it, didn't, it work. didn't work. And I feel you so much supporting that. Like, and I don't want to think that you'll just say anything I want to hear. I want to, I, I, I trust this path. I'm trusting Jesus more and more mm -hmm. and I know I trust you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I feel solid that you'll tell me if you do feel something's not given. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're discussing when we talk about this, uh, this uh, eclipse, and we talk about, because this is the day uh, that everyone's talking about it, and, and it's very much about uh, leave behind past patterns, be ready for significant changes, be ready to leave the past behind. You know, for human beings, just like in the 12-step program, there's 12 steps. And they don't say, just come walk through the door, and we'll just uh, give you the darshan, or give the transmission and out you go and you're, you're enlightened. It's actually, uh, here's the structure, here's the steps. Um, we just watched a, a movie with Joachim Phoenix, I think that you've seen yep, too. Yeah, I did. Uh, he won't get far by foot. Yeah. Don't worry, he Don't won't get Yeah, he won't, he won't get, get far, far by foot, which was so beautiful about work it. And that's what the sponsor kept saying, just work it, come back, do the steps, do the steps. and. For someone who's going through a lot of pain and, and chaos and hurt, uh, mm. the steps are very, very helpful. In fact, mm. they're necessary. And so these seven years have been work the steps, work the steps, work the steps. And then I think you reach a point, that's what this big lunar eclipse is about, especially for what we're talking about and for the, our whole community, for all of you, it's like, it's, are you ready to go into prayer? Are you ready to fully dive into the prayer instead of uh, trying to figure out next steps or whatever? It's really to get into this deep, deep prayer and that, that is the connection with spirit. That's mm. a direct connection with spirit where everything that you need to know you will be told. Mm. You see how it, it 
you have gratitude for the steps. You have mm. gratitude for ev for the structure. You have gratitude because it was all necessary. I do. I do. Yeah. I know how to pray now. I don't start my day without getting up and praying, lighting a candle, doing my lesson. I won't. I won't go out to eat without praying. I, I, I used to just, oh, if I could just get there, I'd be happy. What I need, what I want. I, you're so yeah. right. Yeah. I needed those steps. Yeah, yeah. And now the prayer of the heart, it's really, it reminds me of that time when uh, a group of us uh, went down t into the Mormon um, uh, temple and the grounds and everything like this. And uh, we were just walking around on, uh, on the day and... And then there were more Mormon missionaries everywhere, just like scurrying about. And then uh, one, they came up to us, and there's a group of uh, maybe six, seven of us. And then this one woman, she was just in the passion and the glory and everything. And, and she came up to our group, and she just went, and she went around the group, and she looked everybody in the eye, and she went, pointed to them, and she looked them straight in the eye. Will you pray with me? Wow. When the first one was silent, she went to the next one. Will you pray with me? She went to the third. Will you pray with me? She looked them all directly in the eye. Will you pray with me? Very powerful symbol. And then she came around to me and she looked me straight in the eye and she said, Will you pray with me? And I said, I pray unceasingly. She went, Oh, oh that's so good. <laughs> you know, that's so, what she was fishing for was that answer. I pray unceasingly. And really, that's, it's, we're taking the prayer off of the idea of praying gratitude for this or praying over grace over dinner or the specifics. We're coming into re realizing that prayer is the song of our heart. It's, the, our, it's the desire of our heart. It's life itself, um, that prayer. And I think um, that, you know, that's part of what this big shift is for you now. It's reliance on prayer. And, and to do that... Really, you do start to take all the formulas, all the things that worked well, all those things that you, structure that you were grateful for, and you just kind of tidy them all up, and then, you, <laughs> okay, there you go. It's gone wow. now, and I'm going to give my mind over to what's, the, new? what's new, what's given, what's, yeah. the, what's the prayer of the heart in this moment. And, and actually, it's kind of nice to, everything's given. You know, it's like you've been partnered up, you're ready to hit the road for a time, and what a beautiful opportunity, because both of us know how the Spirit can use the symbol of travel, it's just symbols, but is as far even more loosening, being more like a, a translucent vessel of, of guidance of light, because uh, the symbols change so fast when you're traveling, yes. and, and it's so beautiful, I've always felt, thank you, Jesus, for that beautiful use of symbols to free me from reliance on the symbols. And, and ultimately we have to remember that salvation ultimately is, you know, I do not know the thing I am, where I'm going, what I'm doing, how to look upon myself or the world. It's actually what the ego would call being completely gullible is really being completely open to the moment and open to be used without any past reference. Mm. And that's what prayer really is. Prayer frees us from constantly basing our decisions on past references and, and let it be given. You know, if there's something, if there's a word I'm to speak, then you give it to me. If there's someone I'm to call or to visit, then you tell me. You go before me. You know, I, I would step back and let you lead the way, Spirit. You go before me in everything. And that's really prayer. That's what prayer really is. Mm. So I think that that is significant too because you have gratitude for what seemed to come before but now the, you can't go ahead on the branching of the road because you can't go the way that you you came before. You know, if there is a branch and the branch is, is really calling you into this deep prayer and it's saying you'll do fine, you'll do great uh, with this. You know, you have a willing heart, you're willing to to listen, to follow, to serve the Spirit, and, and that is a, a significant shift. Oh, wow. I, while you were speaking, you know what I heard, like, wow. And that, that is our, our prayer, is to be in prayer all the time. That's all we want. But, you know, it takes a lot of, um, it just takes a lot of reminding yourself, oh, I forgot to pray, I forgot to pray. And I've traveled so much with you, David, and Kirsten, and even Eric, so I relied on, they had all been in 
the training longer than me. And so there was, there was kind of maybe even a lax, a laziness. Like, I know if I don't got it, they do. But now, Micah's just come four weeks in community, and she was basically just doing tasks that were given to her. So although we're going to pray together, I know that I've, you know, it's, it's not like I have to be so, I, I feel excited about that, yeah, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's very sparkly. It's, it's sparkly, you know, it's like that whenever two or more come together in my name, I am there. That's the sparkly, the, the joy of it. Because it's like you're right on the edge. It's like that scene in uh, Titanic, you know, when Kate and Leonardo are right at the very point of the ship. And, and he says, I got you. And she's just like leaning out over the ship as the wind's blowing her hair. She's, she's, she's at the very front. The entire massive ship is all behind her. And she's being held by Leonardo. And there they are. And they're in that beautiful moment. And then, of course, Celine's voice comes <laughs> on. And everyone's just going, oh my gosh. I don't know what that is, what I'm experiencing in this moment. But I want that. <laughs> I want that. And, and that's, that, that's the joy of being in the moment in the prayer, really letting go of, of your, like your markers, you know. You, you know, even, even dancers on a stage, you know, ballerinas, they always talk about hit your mark, hit your mark, and there's little mark. But it's like when you get into the prayer, then you're not looking for the markers anymore. When, when someone's in a sports event and they get, the athlete gets into the zone, they, everything seems to slow down and mm. they feel like, oh, it's just all just perfect. The experience feels perfect. But it's also, there's no individual doer in that. And that's what all this practice has been, has been loosening from the doer. Because the mm. doer would try to step in every once in a while and that's where the anxiety or stress would come in. Mm -hmm. and now you have to practice with the relationship, with, with just showing up and mm. stepping back. I will step back and let you lead the way. Show me the way. You just kind of show up in, in presence, you know, in your mind. And then you see how easy it all is. Everything is t completely taken care of. There's no difficulties whatsoever. Yeah, because I've had intervals of that. But now what I'm hearing and what I'm feeling is it's time for that to be all mm. one movement like always in prayer and never in anxiety because I've linked in to my source and I stay there. And yeah. two or more are gathered. I have Micah's hand to hold and give it, you know, over and over and over. So yeah. it feels so exciting and, and beautiful and I'm yeah. grateful. And yet yeah, I leave it. Um, so today is the full moon and we have a meditation tonight at La Casa with um, our friend who's visiting. And, um, you know, I leave two days later and I do feel like it's time to, to let go of the intensity in the past and that it, not to say there won't be more healing, but I say yes to this joy and this love and this new, this new era of gentle love and just flowing with the Spirit. And so we'll be meditating and putting our prayers out tonight and just, yeah, just being together for this this huge epic event, it's like the blood red moon or something, and it's saying that all that's, that wants, all that you've worked on, and all that's time to shed, it's, it's going now. This is the time. The past is gone, and old patterns that we've been working on being healed are, are done. They're done. And I say yes. With yeah. you, David yeah, Hoffmeister, yeah, yeah. yay! <laughs> we, we go for it. We say yes. <laughs> it's beautiful. I can see, it's love seeing all your smiling faces there, too. All, our collaborators, you know, collaborators of mind, that's what we all are, collaborators of mind. We're, we're, we're rejoicing together, the Spirit's pouring through us, and uh, yeah, it's a community without boundaries, it's a community without walls, it's a community without words, even. It's a community of, of this presence and this deep love that we feel, and we're all being used together. And uh, I just love to watch the orchestration. I love to, to see the smiling faces. I love being here in the studio. Even I was on the first show and then on your show. And in the middle, I uh, was just sitting here while Ken and Andrew were talking and watching the faces just light up. The smiles coming across people's faces. You can see the joy. You can see the witnesses of the 
of the transmission of this love that's going, and the witnesses are all around us, and we're all being used, we're all part of that now. So it's, isn't it fun, isn't it exciting to, to rejoice together? Also, there's, it's fun, but there's lots of travels coming in. I've got some, you've got some, and we're kind of, uh, we'll be re-connecting or coming together, it feels like, over in, in Europe. Yeah. After your time in, uh, in Florida and Canada, you're going to come over there, and I'll be over there in the springtime. So, mm -hmm. But it's all wide open. I see uh, our collaborators yeah. are, are with us, Monique and, and Micah, and a lot of the ones from, from Europe will be collaborating. I see Bridget, yeah. hopefully we'll get something in there. Awesome. With, you know, we're just going to wait and let it show itself, just from the prayer of the heart. Peter, up there in, in England, uh, and, yeah, yeah. yeah, I could just see it's all there, and it's, we're just kind of just going to watch it happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm flying into Europe just a few days before or after David, and we have three months that we can be in the country for now. And then I haven't booked any, any gatherings out there. I know David will be based in the Mallorca house. Yeah, that that's the way in. it's planned right now, yeah. And then I'll, I'll be based at uh, Micah's apartment in Holland, but they'll be, they'll be touring. I, I don't know what you, you... You'll be just popping your smiling face. And yeah, I'll, I'll just everywhere. see what, what's, what's happening there. <laughs> He'll just flow where he flows. and Yeah, I, I plan on touring that time that I'm out there as well with Micah. So, yeah, it's, it feels very spontaneous. Florida is filling up quite, quite quickly, so... Um, and then, yeah, off to Canada, off to Portugal, and then based in Holland for three months. At the same time as David will be there, and I'm sure I'll be at the Mallorca house, you felt that we'd make some pop-ins there. Yeah, so. yeah. It's finally here. I don't, I don't know if Micah and I could wait any longer. <laughs> we were like, really ready. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, I'm just so grateful for you coming on the show, David. I, I really wanted to talk about, like, is it okay to be happy? Really, is it okay to be in the joy? That's what I wanted to say. But I, I knew it, I was full of shit. Of course it's okay. Are you going to make the decision that you're ready to be in joy? Because that's, so as I was trying to plan to ask David this question about how do you, you be in the joy, I answered it. So I just bring him on so that you guys can be in the joy with him. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. We love you so much. Oh my God, so much. Thank you guys for being with me all this, I don't know, maybe eight episodes. It's been so healing for me. I'm so grateful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jessica and Rudy, yeah. 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 Luz. And Tamara. <laughs> Tamara, yeah. Wow. Oh my oh, gosh. My sweetness, it's all forgiven. I just love this. Patrick, he said he's going to come to Mexico.